When my father-in-law asked me for help for his PC, I was not sure at 100% I will do it. And I will tell you why. If you are the techie guy in any family, you know what I'm talking about. Each time there is a problem with the PC of any member of your family, of the cousin or the brother or the great grandmother of the member of your family, you're gonna have to deal with it. And one day it's gonna be like, hey, Air Max, the printer doesn't work today. I don't know why. Is this crazy printer? How are we gonna deal with it? Well, I had to do something. Because I like, obviously, my, my father-in-law has been a really good guy. And also because I did believe at the time I could make a miracle. And when I say a miracle, you will understand what I'm talking about. Let's get into it. Let's start with a little bit of context. And first, I want to introduce you to the monster of a PC my father-in-law decided to buy 10 years ago. Yes, you heard it well. 10 years ago. Here we are. Acer Aspire Z1621. As I called it here, the monster. On paper, this thing was certainly good when he decided to get it. I would say like it's a mix between a laptop and a desktop. There is no really desktop. Like everything, if you, if you look at the picture, is, is inside the, the screen. So it's pretty fun because it, it looks like it's really mobile, but there is no battery in it. You know, it just doesn't take a lot of space. I guess on your uh, desk. But if you ask me, like I'm a PC enthusiast, if I would ever buy that, I would say no. Because at the time it was pretty expensive. Uh, I think he spent around like $1,000 Canadian to buy this 10 years ago. It's a lot of money. When we were discussing, because he actually showed me the PC, he bring it home to my office. And I was like, man, like why did you buy that? And he told me, well, you know, like he has a touch screen. I thought it was pretty fun at the time, but the thing is like I never had touched the touch screen in my life ever and I'm getting bothered by it because if I move my hand towards the screen, like everything starts to pop out and it's more pain than a feature. And I was laughing so hard because this is a typical type of buy you get because you have all those features at the time which sound like really interesting, but when you actually use them, you're like, uh, meh, like a big meh. Anyways, this is a big beast we have to deal with. Guys, if you look at the specs, it's even worse. This PC is uh, based on a CPU architecture. It's an Intel Celeron 4 core at 1.83 gigahertz. And it has 4 gigabytes of RAM, DDR3 RAM. I'm telling you. I didn't know what it was when he bring it home, but when I started it, I did understand right away for privacy reason because i don't want to show like the desktop of my father-in-law i'm just talking about it like that i'm going to show you some images of course you won't see how slow it was but i'm going to tell you to start the pc it took me almost two minutes from the moment i push the button to reach uh, the logging screen two minutes to boot to be exact i think it was one minute and 58 seconds the nightmare, dude. The nightmare. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. It's like, whoa, what is happening? And then I decided to open like a simple Excel file. And it took me almost like two minutes to open the file. The thing was bloated to the moon. What is actually interesting is like, if you look at the launch, the PC was certainly like delivered with Windows 8.1. But <laughs> Windows, because it's, it's Windows, decided to upgrade itself to Windows 10. And even if I, I wouldn't say it's a user like fault here, it's more the fact that Windows really push you to upgrade to the next version, which is fair, but doesn't really take in consideration the hardware you have. And man, like Windows 10 on this machine is, is a pain, like a real, real pain. So yeah, just to give you an idea, like if you have any access to a uh, Geekbench, this is a pure performance of the machine. Uh, this is this has been done by another user because on the machine I had I couldn't even launch anything just to give you an idea where we are at in terms of performance. So the idea with my father-in-law was to make a deal with him. I told him, listen, we're going to change the hard drive because the hard drive is 10 years old. Now there is SSD. They are dirt cheap, like these Kingston 400 
80 gigabytes you can find right now on amazon.com for 23 dollars they, they are given we're gonna go on an ssd because first i want to have a backup of all your data and like that i won't touch any of it and second i want to start fresh on something which is really fast and those kingston for the the price they are delivering like plenty plenty of speed and second part of the deal is that we're gonna get rid of windows and we're gonna move to linux and i'm telling you it was not really like warm about that because you know he has his little habit so we went into the discussion of like trying to understand what he was actually doing with the pc and this is in my opinion the most important part when you decide to switch from any operating system to linux you need to understand what are your needs in terms of application even before thinking about a distro you need to understand what you need the computer for and for him it was pretty straightforward he just wanted to do some excel some browsing some email stuff um, he also wanted to use skype i was kind of a little bit scared about this one but he wanted to use skype why not and the other thing two important thing he wanted to do was printing and scanning something he does like a lot on his computer with like pictures and documents so it was really like for all on that he was like yeah i need to do that and also he wanted to have like some type of backup system because he used like external hard drive to back up all his picture and, and document so after going through all of those needs i could say like easily that uh, linux will do it like finger in the nose so now the question at one million dollar what distro i'm gonna have to install when you think about the desktop usage i would say arch and gen 2 maybe if you want to go really deep but i would say arch but obviously my father-in-law is not a techie and i don't feel like i want him to educate himself or i don't want to educate him on linux to become like an advanced user i just want him to never touch the terminal ever and just enjoy the ride that's what i want him to do so how do we do that well there is only one option in my eyes and it is du -du 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 linux mint so let me explain i think debian would have been good too or even ubuntu but i think for multiple reasons they were not really adapted to his needs his needs are super simple and i do believe like linux mint come really strong for people who want to transition to windows to linux for me this is the best distro for the beginner i won't say the word newbie because when people think about newbie it's kind of like pejorative and they think it's like of negative but it's not you need to start somewhere when you switch and if i put my father-in-law on gen 2 having to compile every piece of software listen to me every piece of software on his four core with four gigabytes of ram it will literally kill me and he will think linux is trash but if he starts there we might have a chance and the only issue i see really is the uh, hardware and i was kind of worried but then when you go to the faq on their website what are the system requirements two gigabytes of ram four gigabytes of wine recommended for a comfortable usage boof we are easy there 20 gigabytes of disk space 100 gigabytes recommended we have 500 gigabytes on this ssd and the resolution of his screen this screen is 768p minimum and the computer i have in my hand it's 1080p we are golden the first thing i've done was to upgrade the firmware this step was really not easy because <laughs> the only way to upgrade the firmware on this specific hardware was to run an executable through windows and man my legs were shaking when i did it i don't have any footage of it but dude <laughs> like never buy this type of pc like never this this was not a pleasant experience but anyway we went through it i did upgrade the bios it went smooth 15 minutes guys 15 minutes to upgrade the bios i was shaking the whole time it did work perfect that being done i decided to go to the next step 
And the next step was to go through the opening of the PC, which was literally like opening a screen with a laptop glue behind it. And this was really painful. It was really hard. It added pressure because I knew like my father-in-law didn't really care about the PC anymore. It was kind of like a last chance uh, before maybe buying a new one. But I, I was kind of like worried because it was not my hardware. It was someone related in my family. I, I didn't want to break it. So I removed the screw and I start to use a credit card to go through like the, the opening of the case of the screen and try to slowly get into like two pieces of plastic. And it took me a solid like one hour to try to open it without breaking the little like plastic bit in the middle. I did it, but like, <laughs> man, I was such a pain. Then I was quite surprised about how the hardware was accessible. It was really easy for me to, to switch the hard drive. I removed the old one, put the new one. Uh, this, this was good. I, I had literally no issue outside of like just opening the case itself. I closed it back and went for uh, the good old uh, operating system install. So as you know, I made a video like prior to that where I show you guys how to use Ventoy. So I use my USB Ventoy key. I downloaded the latest version of Linux Mint on it, booted on it. I had no issue at all. Uh, the system recognized it. I was able to boot it in UEFI mode, so secure mode, no problem. The installation was great. I was actually also surprised by the fact that by going through the process, the Linux Mint install recognized all the hardware. The touchscreen was working out of the box. The Wi-Fi card was working out of the box. It took me some time to install because obviously like it's an old PC, like the, the four core Celeron is not like those 32 thread type of CPU we have now, but it, it did work. And after like my first boot, everything went pretty smooth. I went through the assistant because Linux Mint, when it starts, propose you an assistant. I did all the step, you know, I upgraded the system right away. Uh, through the GUI, then I update the all, all the server location to have like a better speed overall. And then I set up time shift to make sure that if anything happened, we'll have some type of backup. And it went pretty smooth. I was actually amazed by the fact the PC was so fast compared to Windows. So obviously the SSD helped, but I can tell you like installing Linux on those old PC is sometimes like just a miracle. Like you go from like a dead PC, which, which are ready to garbage, to a PC which is like fully usable. Like I was really, really happy about it. And then I went through like all the software, he requ like he asked me to install. And then too, like it was super fast. I installed like Skype. Uh, LibreOffice was already installed out of the box, which was pretty nice. And I installed also like the backup software. I installed a, a software called Lucky Backup, which was perfect for the use. It had a GUI and it was just like some type of like, you plug, you press a button, it does a backup with AirSync and you, you just just have some type of like pop art will, will come up and boom, you're done. Just have to unplug the, the SSD, which was like really, really nice. And also also notice like if all the drivers were up to date. Everything was up to date. Like it's, this was just insane. For me to think that everything worked out of the box like that was just wonderful. So now the moment of truth. I took the PC to my father-in-law house, installed it in his office and showed it to him. I was kind of scared about his reaction because I didn't really know what he would think about the whole Linux experience. To me, it's pretty straightforward, but introducing him to this new like computer world could be like scary, you know, and uh, I was not sure of the outcome. So something that blew him away right off the bat was the fact it was really similar to Windows. So he took the keyboard, took the mouse, tried to go around and click on like his Excel file. And he was like, whoa, it goes fast. I was like, yeah. And then he started to look at, you know, like his like accounting, like type of file he has, you know, for his, his, his little uh, uh, finance stuff. 
he clicked on it and he was like wow all the formula works and I was like yep it does work and he was kind of surprised by it and I was like kind of amazed by the fact that he still didn't think that other software could open his office file to me that was the first thing that really like shocked me uh second thing was the fact that he was asking me about his antivirus he was like what I'm gonna do with my Norton antivirus I was like you don't need antivirus on Linux and I'm laughing right now because this is so cool when you think about it and he couldn't believe me and I had to explain him you know how antivirus work and how Linux works and you don't really need those on Linux it was still like perplexed kind of it was still like mm. but I think he got it and the thing I, f I, I believe that literally blew his mind was the printer so I couldn't install the printer at my place I had to plug it over there like in, in his office and when I plugged it I just plugged the USB printer and boom it got recognized like instantly we had nothing to do I type scan to find like a scanner software I think this is the one which is uh, delivered with uh, NOM and they use it in Cinnamon in Linux Mint clicked on it and boom pop out scan a document right off the bat it was like blown away by that it was like whoa everything works I was like yeah so then he, he tested me he was like what about Skype went to Skype everything worked even the camera was recognized by Skype so it, it was pretty awesome now today when I'm recording this video we are one month in and all the feedback I had from my father-in-law was like it just works <laughs> like no problem it just works and listen guys for me this is a win this is a miracle okay because we we tend to forget that sometimes this old hardware which is not super you know performant can have a second life on linux this pc is ready to go for at least i would say like five years easy i would say at least five years until you know of uh, the the screen die or the power supply died like something like really bad happened and because it's a one piece type of pc it won't be able to change it to repair it is good for for five years again i'm telling you this was the whole purpose of this video i, I wanted you to witness what linux can do for i would say like a normal user not a gamer not a pc enthusiast just you know your random pc user will use his pc to browse do some type of office work and you know communicate with it with you know other people through skype or you know telegram or whatever type of software they use linux just works so yeah that's uh that was the, the little story i wanted to share with you guys have you ever done that with your family member like have you ever tried to i would say convert them to linux because for me like it's a, it's a big success the next one on my list is my wife i don't know if i'm gonna win this one but we're gonna get there um yes and just to close the video you are certainly asking like what about the performance themselves linux mint was booting in less than 50 five seconds on this pc so i would say like we increase the performance by at least two for the us age of this pc this is just amazing that's it that's all guys thanks for watching and see you in the next one and yes i'm i'm gonna do a, a tutorial like in depth tutorial for linux mint i've been talking about it for like months now and this is the next video which is coming stay tuned don't forget to subscribe Thanks for watching again. Take care. Bisous, bisous.